And I'm just eyeballing. There are computer programs that will actually pick out exactly what the lactate threshold is. But if you just eyeball it, it looks like the threshold here is starting at just under seven miles an hour before you have a quick exponential increase. <coughs> but then after a few months of training, you would hope that this is what the change that's going to take place. So now the lactate threshold happens at you know, close to eight miles an hour. So you've improved the lactate threshold by over a mile an hour. That's huge. That is a huge improvement in lactate. You can calculate how many minutes that is per mile. But a mile an hour difference, that would be huge. Since we went through the background yesterday of lactate threshold, we're going to get right into the training. Okay, so types of workouts. Straight up LT run, where you just do a continuous run at LT pace. And then this is a term I've stolen from Jack Daniels, is uh, LT cruise intervals, where you break up the run into smaller segments. Still run at lactate threshold pace, a very, very short recovery period. And then what I call LT plus cruise intervals, Short intervals run it slightly faster than LT pace with very short recovery period. So if the lactate threshold is here, you want to run either at or very, very slightly above. If you run here, that's no stimulus to train this anymore. Now you're training something else. You're training beer to max. Okay, so if you're going to go above, you only want to go slightly above to try to get this line to come up to here. Um, <coughs> And then what I call LT-LSD combo run, which I just use for marathoners. It simulates the feelings of the marathon without having to run as far. We insert periods of the run at LT pace.